Hello, welcome to Fiber Chats. Irina here, and my guest today is Gregory Jones from Some Dyke and Some Guy Dying. <laughs> Hi. Hi, um, how are you? Good. So we've met on Instagram, and the thing that caught my attention that you don't look like a typical dyer. I don't know if like there is a typical look for indie dyers, but you know, like I saw your picture and I was thinking you know, New Hampshire biker or something yeah, like tough guy, you know, like heavy metal. How, how did you discover indie dyeing? As well as my wife, she had, uh, she was always doing knitting and stuff, but she was always getting these little cute packages, you right. know, and I didn't think that of it till there was like a lot of them and, you know, it's <laughs> hand dyed yarn. So <laughs> I uh, tried to talk her into learning how to dye the yarn herself. You know, I had great arguments for it. You know, you could do whatever you want. You want a little bit of black with some red and orange or something, you can do whatever you want. She didn't like that. Right. And she said she wants to buy the yarn that's already been done, you know. Um, by that time, I'd already been looking at her yarn that she had been purchasing from Indie Dyers and um, watching YouTube videos. And I started just kind of getting interested in it. Right. And I was freshly out of my heavy metal band. It's funny you mentioned <laughs> heavy metal. And, uh, so I was looking for a creative outlet. So I just kind of eventually decided I'd give it a try. Right. And uh, it didn't work out real well at first, but it got better as I went, you know. And Do so you remember it. that? So tell me about that, like, very first skein, like that very first experience. Oh, well, I, I was just, uh, you know, you watch it on YouTube. It always flows so perfectly and easily, and, you know. And it's not really that hugely difficult, but um, right. it, I don't, it, well, this, this is the first one. So <laughs> it, it's not horrific, but it is not anything what I expected. So <laughs> what, what was your idea in head? Like, what were you going for? How did you envision it's going to turn out? On this one, um, I actually didn't have any idea what was going to happen with it. I just thought it was going to turn out like, like I was going to take this and you know, maybe make it look like this or something. <laughs> you know, I thought it was going to come out perfect, you know. Okay. But uh, it didn't deter me. I was actually extremely proud of this. I was sending pictures of this out to everybody I knew. Right. You know, they were like, oh. What yeah, did great. your wife think of that? What was your reaction? She was, uh, she was supportive and trying to be really into it, but I, you know, I don't think it was <laughs> <laughs> wasn't as good as, as uh, where I ended up later. You know? Right. So talking about your band right okay. how did the boys react to your dying yarn um i was already out of the band uh before i started this um i'm in touch with with most of them and uh they're like cool do whatever you think man it's it's <laughs> kind of really weird you know for my group of people that i hang out with i guess but right. they've been really supportive you know do you do you send them pictures of your yarn um, not too much. I did a little bit. I mean, we're in touch, but I, I don't think we, we don't really like hang out anymore because right. we, we just met for the band. Right. And, and when, when that, when we decided to be done with that, you know, it's, we're still in touch, but we're not, you know, they're not my buddies, you know, right. like right. close friends or anything, you know. Right. I said so, that to my, my other buddy and he, he's actually bought, he was one of my first uh, customers. He went and bought some, uh, Oh, that's awesome. I don't know if he was able to support his friend or not, but he seems happy with it. <laughs> right. Um, do you have a lot of friends like of yours or of your wives who are knitters? Um, my wife knits quite a bit. Um, my buddy knits. Um, no, I didn't, you know, I didn't have a big friend base of knitters. My it was my wife that was uh doing it. I didn't even grow up around it. My my mother didn't knit or anything, so it was my first. Uh, time really watching somebody make something, you know, was was my wife, you know. Right. So when you first got into it, it was with the idea of making this yarn for her, right? Yeah, it was kind of to make it for, well, kind of. I mean, I, I kind of wanted her to do it. She didn't want to. Then I got interested in, well, I bet you I could do that, right. you know, type of thing. So it was like almost a little challenge in myself to be able to do it. And uh, But you weren't and now, planning to go into business at that point. Uh, no, not not at first. No. Okay. So, I started up with a lot of yarn. <laughs> right. So how did it progress to becoming like what gave you idea of try to sell? Um, well, um, 
I, well, I started ending up with a lot of yarn, you know, cause I'm dying them at, you know, five skeins at a time usually. And, um, and my wife's real happy with that because that's free yarn. Right. <laughs> but then, uh, then I started showing it to uh, one of the office people at my work who, who is a crocheter. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was saying, hey, you, you could try selling that on Etsy or something, you know. And right. so I started kind of thinking about that. And then I asked my wife, hey, look, don't be nice to me here. Is this good enough that I could try selling it? And she said, I think I would try to sell it if I were you, you know. So it just kind of progressed into it. And it's... Um, it's fun now. Now I'm starting to get obsessed with yarn, which is weird, you know? <laughs> I can't just walk by flowers anymore and just say, oh, pretty flowers. So I'm just like, oh, I wonder if I can do those colors and make them work. <laughs> I'm becoming obsessed with the right. dyeing. The colors. So like, where do you find your inspirations for colors? Like, is it just like, is it mostly nature or you see it everywhere? Uh, sometimes it's it's nature and those haven't turned out awesome for me. I mean, I, I'm never happy with them, like compared to some kind of a flower. It never quite, I don't quite nail it. Right. Um, some of it just comes while I'm at work. I'll just think of, hey, I wonder what would happen if I use this, you know, fluorescent fuchsia with, with you know, this orange over here or something. And sometimes it works out and sometimes it doesn't. It's, I was just kind of sporadic a lot of times for me when I come up with a colorway, you know. And do you usually like think of one color or you come up with the whole like collection of colors? Uh, it's usually just one to start. And then I try to think of what I could do to kind of create an undertone in it or, you know, a highlight to it. And it just kind of takes off, you know, and sometimes it's totally random, you know. Um, you I got like this one here was just I, I wanted to do orange. And there's I don't know how well you can see it on, right, on the true. camera, but I've got some. Um, a couple different shades of orange in there that I used. That was just kind of a random idea. I wasn't, wasn't even planned out really, you know. Right. So when you um, when you started selling, was that easy to market, easy to find your first customers? Like, tell me a little bit about the beginning of that process. Um, well, let's see. The first two customers were super easy because one was my wife. I said, <laughs> hey, we got to test the site and test the shipping make sure it works out. The other one was my buddy. Right. But after that, it was a little difficult because I didn't have a big uh, and still don't have a huge presence on social media or anything to market. It. So I was just kind of trying to learn how to get it out there, you know, as I went. So right. I'm even still learning. And do you feel like it's a continuous sort of education? Like you're always learning new techniques, you're always learning new tricks. Yes. Yeah. I, I look around, I watch other people's uh, feeds on, you know, Instagram and Facebook and YouTube and, you know, they'll do a different technique and sometimes I'll want to try that. Sometimes it works for me. Sometimes it don't. Right. Uh, sometimes I think I made up one and then I'll find it somewhere else later. And I'll think, well, <laughs> at, least, at least I came up with it. Just maybe not first. You know? <laughs> right. Uh, do you, do you, have you ever taken any classes about yarn dyeing? No. No, no art classes or dyeing classes or anything like that. Right. A lot of people see that the name on the packages when I mail them out is some guy dying and they ask me if it's tie dye. I guess it's because of the way I look, but oh, you're tie dyeing shirts. I'm like, no, it's yarn, you know? <laughs> right. You, you've been a guitar player, right? Yes. Um, do you feel like it's connected, like the music and the dying like do you feel like it's the same creativity or you like is that something like you completely like new new to you like the fact that you can do right it's own craft. New. yeah it's totally new it's, it's completely different um but it is creativity so um i'm happy with it you know i'm not doing the music anymore and so i'm thrilled to be doing something that's creative even though it's more of a visual type thing you know rather than the music, you know, and uh, I love them both, but they're both completely uh, separate. I yeah, I don't even know how to explain that or even, but I don't know how I would even tie the two together, really. Right. And you mentioned your work. What do you do for work? I drive a forklift for a, uh, it's a molding company. Uh, moldings are, you know, like around your doors and stuff. Right. And along the baseboards of your walls. We, we make that stuff. And I, I bring them the materials to do it so i have plenty of time to sit in my forklift and think about and that. think about <laughs> colors right yeah and new inspirations right uh, 
do you ever like do you ever try to post something for sale and your wife begs you to keep it for her no she just I, I always like i said I, I usually make it a minimum of five skeins at a time like if it's a brand new idea i'll just make five and she'll just take one right. <laughs> which is perfectly fine that's the benefit she gets for it you know and uh yeah she's happy to for me to sell them but if she really likes there's a few of them she said hey this one's mine by the way <laughs> <laughs> you can have that it's at least a compliment you know <laughs> first dibs um have you ever been to a yarn festival no i have uh since started looking for some in my area and i haven't found any um i've been to some kind of crafty type festivals and there might have been yarn there but i wouldn't at that time, that time you were to make my wife happy right <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's funny because it's like usually people who get into the yarn dyeing, like from everybody i interview like every yarn dye i interviewed they usually knitters themselves so the, they usually first learn how to knit and then they're like well i really wish i had this color and i really wish i had that color and that's how they get into the yarn dyeing. so do you feel like knitting is a possibility for you maybe I, I i watch my wife knit and i think i'm gonna get so lost on that so it's knit knit pearl but you know i don't understand <laughs> it um i'm pretty sure i'll probably try it here sometime soon but i don't know how successful that will be <laughs> right well you know i was interviewing louis boreas brooklyn boy needs so he's like very famous uh knitter and designer in new york and so he organized this program where he teaches kids in elementary school this bunch of different volunteers how to knit so i asked him i was like have you ever met a child that you weren't you know you couldn't teach how to knit and he said yeah there's always like one or two but i'm just changing it for them and instead of concentrating on knitting and like they getting frustrated with that i'll just teach them how to make like a yarn ball or a pom-pom or something with yarn right. so there's like other ways of if uh knitting and purling so right scary. Yeah. <laughs> you can just it's start with something scary else. i know i'm gonna lose count you know i see my wife lose count and i don't want none of that on me <laughs> she gets frustrated um, right. I, I can make a mean pom-pom though i've done that before when i was a kid <laughs> interesting so you see maybe like it it came from back then it might have um i i remember doing some finger knitting of some sort right. um not vividly though so i must have been awfully young might have been with my grandmother or something like that you know and i i learned how to make those you know basic little pom-poms you know right and uh it was fun so you mentioned that the first color you like were very proud of do you uh, still get that sense of pride with every color? Do you have favorites? Do you have some that you like? I can't believe I actually made this in moment. There's a few. I, I have one colorway called Raven's Blood, which I am currently sold out of, so I don't have one to show. <laughs> um, that was the first one I was really happy with. You know, I was. Uh, I had another idea. I can't remember what it was to do with it. I, I did the first bit that I wanted to do. And I was going to wash it out and dry it and then do something else with it. I can't remember exactly what, but as I was rinsing it out, I was like, I, I can't put anything else on this. I got to keep it like it is. And right. I'll be actually cooking up some more of that probably tomorrow. You know. So like talking about repeating colors, how do you like, have you ever had issue of recreating the same exact color? Yes, <laughs> I can show you that. I, I was hoping you'd ask something like that. Um, this is a little mini that I was just experimenting with. And uh, you kind of, I don't know how well you can see, but there's that. And I tried to recreate that on uh, 100 gram skeins. And this is what I got. Okay. This is an oopsie. It's not anything like it. So right. I kind of learned that you might need to write things down or film <laughs> what you're doing as you do it to know what order you did it in. And, and how I went about it, because I can't remember what I did. It was an experiment, you know, Right. But I really like it. <laughs> so like when you work now, like now that you've learned that lesson, this that mini skein, right? What's your process? How do you like when you create new color? Do you measure everything out and write it down immediately? Do you film yourself? Um, I film when I'm uh, applying the dye to the yarn. 
Um, but when I mix the dyes up, I have I put a piece of tape on the the container, and I'll put what the uh, dye color is and what the, uh, the solution is. If it's you know one percent or three percent or what I'm doing, and then if I'm speckling, I can see the order, or you know, or even pouring the dye, I can see the order that I'm doing it in because I'm filming it, you know, the whole time now. So right. And do you have like a favorite? bunch of colors like colorways sort of that you always gravitate toward um yeah i've got the the raven's blood i like that i want to do this similar colorways with you know instead of red maybe go with an orange or or a purple to and do something real similar with them um but i don't have colors that i i mean i like darker colors i like grays and uh, this is kind of a gray type deal i did um, but I don't, this is the only one I've ever done in gray. I have stuff that I like, but I don't seem to, I'm all over the place when I'm actually doing the dyeing. I've got, you know, the spark stuff and the bright, happy looking stuff. And Right. But when you dye, like, do you have somebody in mind for that? Do you have, like, do you envision what kind of person would buy that thing? Or do you just like, I want to recreate that flower? Like, do you have the final idea of what might happen with that yard in mind? Uh, not really. I just I go after um, just what I think is going to look great. And then by the time it's done, I hope other people think it's great. And I know that there's something for everybody out there. There's knitters that like, you know, the the dark colors. And there's knitters that like fluorescence, you know, and right. and I know that there's somebody there. There's something for everybody, I guess. But um, I don't even think about the person using the yarn when I'm doing the dyeing. Uh, you know, I'm just kind of just like pouring out whatever's in my head to it, you know? What was your reaction first time you saw something made with your yarn? Uh, let's see, well, that was my wife did that. I thought that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> um, no, I have seen uh, uh, one of my other, one of my customers actually sent a picture of some socks she was working on and it's, um, it's like kind of similar, like if you, heard your music played on the radio it was just like you know I, I just got super happy about it you know like oh, somebody's making something with it you know and it's right. awesome I wish I could see everything that people have done you know because there's there's stuff out there I wish I could see it that's the problem right <laughs> well you like ask your customers to yeah send me the picture the updates is what you could. but you know what I, I I must tell you like as a knitter so I need a lot but I collect much more yarn than the speed of my knitting will right. ever consume. <laughs> yeah. So like oftentimes I would buy yarn, but it might take me like a couple of years to get to that, you know, because, oh, yeah. like, because I'll buy like one skein here and one skein there. And then like one day I'm looking at my stash and I'm like, you know what? I'll play with you too. <laughs> and I'm like mixing and, you know, matching all different dyers and all different uh, skeins. So it just might take some time for people to, you know, actually meet with your yarn after they buy it. Not everybody is very disciplined with that. Right. Yeah, well, my wife's that way. I've got in the closet, I did at one point discover like, you know, those kitchen garbage bags. There's about <laughs> three of those that are just full of yarn. Now, some of it is commercial yarn, but a lot of it is hand dyed yarn. I'm like, what is going on here? <laughs> My wife's a hoarder, oh no. <laughs> and then shortly after that, I was dyeing yarn. So. so like now you have your own stash. I do. I have my own stash <laughs> in a separate area, separate types of containers. <laughs> right. And what's your operation looks like? Are you doing it in the kitchen? What do you have like some? Yeah, I usually mix up my dyes and stuff in uh, my son's room. He's moved out. He's grown up now. Right. So I took his room over. And so that's where I dry the yarn and where I mix up the dyes and stuff like that. And, but I do the kitchen is where I do the, the cook on them. Right. Um, and then you mentioned one time that you also have another name besides the Gregory Jones. Yeah, Braden <laughs> Thorn. Um, that's what I, I, my wife actually calls me Brady. Uh, she's never called me Greg. We've been oh, that's together so funny. for years. You know, so I've had that nickname a long time, but I added the thorn when I got into some independent film making. And because I thought, 
well, Brady's my nickname and my grandfather's last name was Thorne. So I put those together. I thought that sounds so much better on a film credit is Brady Thorne's way better than Brady. <laughs> <laughs> so I went with that for a lot of my creative stuff with the band and with uh, with the filmmaking. Right. Um, so when you were doing films, that was like way before the yarn dying, right? Right, uh, yeah. That's been probably 20 years or so is when I started doing that. That's tapered off over time. Right. But so right <laughs> now you don't do that anymore? I don't because there's not a lot going on in my area. Um, I know a lot of filmmakers, but nobody's really making anything right now. Right. And uh, that's the only reason I'm not involved in it. Otherwise, I'd still be doing that, you know? Right. Um, what's your plans for some some guy dying? Like, is there five-year plan? Is there like business plan or just a um, yeah, I'm hoping it'll uh, take off. I'd, I'd like to be dying a lot more and uh, to eventually I'd rather that to you know be my job. Right. Um, it, it could happen. Maybe it won't. Either way, I'm having fun doing it. But right. yeah, I'd like to be able to have fun at my job, you know, not just driving a forklift, but dying yarn, doing something creative. And you want to be able to drive the pitchfork with the with the yarn on top that much. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. Yeah. <laughs> So, um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> right. Have you tried contacting like yarn stores to see if you can sell like more wholesale? Um, not yet. Um, it is something that I've kind of been thinking about it a little bit, but I haven't tried doing that yet. Um, I really got to increase my uh, output of yarn, you know, so a lot of it I've been just doing a little bit here and there, and that's quite a bit. Right. Um, then, you know, I had a run on the shop uh, like a week and a half ago, and I ended up selling out of like three of them. I'm like, hey, you know what? I need to start instead of doing you know five skeins, I need to do like 10 or 15 of the same thing and really get an inventory. Right. And so once I get up to where I've got a lot more than I have been wanting to to see if I can get it in some of the local shops or even uh elsewhere in the country you know that'll that'll put my yarn on their shelves that'd be great <laughs> right um have because you started during COVID, did that make it more difficult for you because of like i know there was shortage of the supplies and it was hard for many to find the yarn bases to like to, to actually die did you have right. any issues with that i i didn't but um i was working through most of COVID, so um and I was, I just started uh, about a year or so ago. So I didn't really have trouble getting the yarn bases, but I wasn't buying a large amount at the right. time either. I was just getting small amounts. So I, I didn't have any trouble getting any of it. Right. Um, so when you buying yarn now, right, to dye, do you plan, like, do you have updates in the stores that you have like every month or something or you just put it right away into your inventory and it's always there? Right. I try to, it's kind of both. I do now that I have my own .com website, um, I do have a, a mailing list that when I uh, get ready to put stuff in the store, I send out a, you know, a coupon code for usually about 15% off for the last couple of weeks. Right. And then I do that the same day that I list them in the store. So they hear about it right off the get go, you know. Right. How do you meet people? Like, so I know you on Instagram. How do you meet people? Do you, how do you like meet new customers, new meters, crocheters? Are you actively like trying to engage with them? Um, it's usually, um, a lot of times it is from liking people's, uh, content on like Instagram or something. Um, sometimes they'll come like my stuff and they'll maybe they'll follow me or or whatever on that. Um, the other thing is just advertising. I've just been getting into advertising a little bit on uh, okay. Facebook and trying to drive traffic that way. But uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm, I feel like a little bit of an outsider to the community being that I don't have a lot of friends that do this. You know, I have my wife and a, a buddy, you know, and that's it. Right. So I'm right. just kind of breaking into the to the world of it, you know. Well, I want to invite you to two different groups. So okay. one group on Facebook called Knitters Gonna Knit, and it's actually a friend of mine and I organized it a few months ago. 
and we encourage everybody to advertise and promote their things so you can promote your yarn there and it's all knitters or crocheters so and different type of artists so that would be great for you and another one called knitting bartender and i interviewed keenan he was like one of the, my guests earlier and it's the same idea like he organized the group because he was frustrated with all the facebook groups that don't allow self-promotion so right. It's another great group to advertise your yarn there and meet other knitters and fiber artists. So try those yeah. too. <laughs> yeah, well, I will definitely join those groups then. <laughs> yeah. I'll send you links or we can like link it under the video also. Yeah. So, um, yeah. do, you do you ever doubt yourself? Do you ever feel like you don't know what to do next or what color to come up next? Do you feel like there's all this pressure to come up with something new? Yes, all the time. And the pressure is really just coming from myself, right. you know, and um, yeah, sometimes I'll put out something that I think is just amazing, you know, and then I'll, I'll see somebody else's hand dyed yarn that they did. And I'll be like, that's so much better than mine. And then I have to remind myself, it's not really a competition here, you know, right. and uh, yeah, I don't know, we're, we're all our worst critics, I think. And yeah, I, I put a lot of pressure on myself that I don't really need to. <laughs> yeah. Well, are you ever on like deadline? Do you push yourself to produce more yarn and to do it faster and to dye more often? Or do I you need like to do those. I, I need to do more often, but that's not where I, I don't put my pressure on there at all. It's just kind of, you know, whenever I feel like it, I know, wow, you need to do it a little more. But uh, usually my when I get the pressure on is, is um, trying to come up with something new when I'm, you know, drawing a blank, you know, it's like, you have to be in the right mood, I guess, the right mindset to, to get that creativity flowing, you know, and sometimes I'm trying to do it when I'm not really all that creative at the moment, you know, and I get frustrated with it, you know. So how do you look for that inspirational mojo? Oh, it's, oh that's easy. It's usually when I'm not trying to find it. That's when it, that's when it hits me, you know. Right. So you just have to like basically take a step away from it and yeah and then it, it's instantly there <laughs> you know right do you feel like the fact that you were in the movie industry the fact that you were like an artist and you know in the band like do you feel like it's all sort of gives you different insight and in, in the business side of it in the artistic side of it uh, yes and no um it, it's helped me with, um, I've got plans for, you know, with the, having done a lot of short films and independent films, I learned uh, quite a bit about, you know, how to shoot something, whether it's a still shot or video. Mm -hmm. And um, it's given me ideas to maybe do little short skits that are revolving around some guy dying, his, you know, the yarn right. and for like little advertisements in a sense, you know, and so I've, I've gained that from being in the film industry and the music is I, I don't know it's just it's all one big ball to me the whole creativity thing is just this is just a different aspect of of the creativity you know do you find it difficult to photograph your yarn to get the right color like the exact color uh, yes it, it is a little bit difficult a lot of times when I'm in in editing the yarn um, I'll have the, the skein of yarn right there with me and I'll try to match it on my computer right. to, to look just about right. And then I can change on somebody else's phone or computer when they see it. But I, I do the best I can on it, you know, but have, it, it can be difficult, you know. Have there ever been any issues with customers when they get the yarn and they're like, that's not what I thought I'm getting? No, I haven't. Not yet. <laughs> um, I have had people mention something similar to that, but it's uh, it was more like the yarn's better looking in person than the photo. Oh, that's so and I'm okay with that. I'd rather be better <laughs> looking in person, you know. Right. And, well, uh, I, find them, you know, lot, like, I find that a lot. I find that a lot because, like, you look at the picture and it's you know it's still like it doesn't have life to it. But then when you see right. it in person and it has all this like depth of color and like the sparkle to it and the right. cluster you know yeah exactly how do you choose your bases do you have a favorite base do you experiment with those 
Um, I've been really hung up on just the sock yarn, and I like um, I like uh, BFL quite a bit, and I like um, merino. You know, everybody's using that. You know, right, right. Um, I am interested in looking into some cashmere and and silk blends. I haven't dove into that yet, but. Yeah, you know, and I'm I'm also trying to add a little bit more. I like the fingering the that weight quite a bit. I'm trying to add more DK and maybe you know get some worsted in there so that there's a little more choice. You know, for you know, not everybody's just going to want sock yarn. You know, I don't know. I'm like I'm a big fan, so <laughs> yeah, <laughs> you can always just combine it. You know, you put right. the stands together, you got your DK. You know, yeah, yeah, it's true. <laughs> you can add up. You can just layer them up. I want to get into some lace too, but I'm scared of it. But I'm gonna do it. <laughs> scared from it? Why? Because I've never done it before. <laughs> it's it's smaller, right? So I'm a little bit. I don't know how I'll do it. It's just one of those irrational fears. <laughs> but I'm I'm planning on uh, looking into doing some lace stuff too. I don't I don't know what people knit with that, but. Oh. That's my like eighty percent of everything I need is with lace. <laughs> oh, good. Then I'll, I'll hit you up and say what's good about lace, and then right. that'll convince me. <laughs> it's so funny because like I remember first time. So I discovered Shetland lace about three years ago, and I started getting into like I mean, first it was like heavy weight lace weight, and now I got into like cobweb and gossamer, and it's like you you can't see that yarn basically. It's just like. Right. You just have to believe it's there, but you can't <laughs> physically see it sort of thing. Right. But I like, remember coming to a yarn store, like local yarn store, and I would ask them, like, what's the thinnest yarn you have? And they would show me, like, some fingering or, like, very heavy weight lace. I was like, no, I need something thinner. And they would be like, what, what do you mean thinner? Like, it doesn't come thinner. <laughs> you know? right. so it's actually, like, hard to find very fine, yeah, fine lace yarn. Right. You know, it's like not the, not every store even carries it. Right. Well, then that's a good that's a good uh, motivator to do that. Then if it's hard right. to find, you know. <laughs> and I know plenty of lace knitters, so I'll help you to right. get the market for it. You know, they always right. for lace weight uh, yarn. Yeah, somehow like it's easier to find it in Europe. Like I ship a lot of it from um, I buy from like uh, England from Shetland, but like, it's harder to find it in the US. Right, mm -hmm. I was actually looking for, I heard about um, yarn that's being spun out of possum. Um, oh my God, I like do that. Find that. I couldn't well, find it. You know, it's <laughs> funny. I was interviewing um, a friend of mine. His name is Grant Mahi and he's from New Zealand. And that's what New Zealand is like famous for. That's probably where I heard about the possum. Maybe, That's yeah. From that so, <laughs> so apparently, so I saw some podcast where a guy from Australia came to New Zealand, and in Australia, possums are endangered species, so they actually like protect them. And in New Zealand, possums can see their pests. Right. So <laughs> there's like a whole different because they're like overpopulated and they eating birds and bird eggs and like they endangering the birds. So they, there's actually like they actually can see their pests. Right. So in New Zealand, the possum fur is like it's uh, the yarn they make it there. So I'm actually right. like dying to try it as well. <laughs> yeah, I, the, the problem I'm having is just finding the undyed uh, yarn that's that's possum. Uh, I'll find it eventually, but you know, if I can afford it, uh, when, right. when something's hard to get, it's pretty pricey. So, right. Well, keep me in mind for that one. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I'll be your first customer for if that. If I find it, I'll send you one. Right. And mink, mink and possum are the two things I wanted to try. <laughs> right. Mink is another one. Um, what do you have like upcoming? in the nearest future color wise like are you working on some new colors that's going to be in the store soon um yes i've got um i got this one this is not done this was started off as an idea there needs to be a lot more black in there so it's this is going to get redone um it's bumble is what i was going to call it uh it's a bumblebee that's where i got the inspiration for that but um and i'm, I'm getting a little bit into um the uh, Surrey alpaca, and um, that's a little bit of a learning curve on how to get a good dye job on it. Right. You know, so I'm going to be adding some of that hopefully soon. 
How do you come up with the names for your yarn? That's hard. <laughs> <laughs> I, sometimes I ask people what they think a good name would be or Bumble. I, I came up with the name Bumble before I started doing the yarn. I was like, well, I'll do something for a bumblebee. And then I started doing that, you know, but um, I've even on Instagram, I've uh, posted pictures and said, hey, what do you guys want to call that? You know, and I'll get suggestions and I'll pick the one I like the best, you know, out of it. Yeah. Right. Do you like when you dye yarn, do you often come back to it? Like, like you mentioned that this one needs more work. Right. Does that happen a lot? Or like usually like you dye it, you rinse it, it's done. Or you right. always come back to it and you add and add and add and like have hard time to stop yourself. Um, not too much. Um, I do sometimes come back on it and say, okay, I, I like it. It's done. That's good. And sometimes I'll see something I don't really care for in it. And uh, so I'm going to redo it different. You know, they're all kind of experiments in a way for okay. me. And so it's kind of 50, 50, some of them they're done when I'm, when I finish the first dye job on them. And sometimes there's, you know, uh, there's one, I think I already threw this one up on screen, but this has a, this purple that's in there. That was a great idea when I did it and I hate the purple part in it. So I'm going to, I'm going to redo it without the purple part and just do the, the rest of fuchsia and the black and see how, how I like that a little bit better. I think, you know, Right. Do you ever do a color and then your wife comes and you think you should redo it or do more to it and, and she tells you, no, this is perfect. Like, does that happen? Yeah, that has happened. Um, we both won that argument because I just gave her all those skeins and then I redid <laughs> it on some, some uh, undyed yarn and did it the way I thought it should be. So she, she won on that in a way. She's, <laughs> she was happy to get the free skeins, you know. Right. Uh, do you have like a favorite project that she made for you with your yarn? Uh, not with my yarn. Um, she made a, uh, I think it's a, it's a shawl. I don't have it anywhere close, but it was on like one of the first good um, dye jobs I did. And she made a shawl out of it. Um, I don't know where it's at. It's not up here. I should have brought it out here. But right. um, it doesn't you... fit me very well, though. <laughs> <laughs> do you ever wear shawls no <laughs> i'll what? wear a scarf though i'm gonna have a scarf this winter out of out of something that i've died i'm gonna i'm gonna have one maybe i'll maybe i'll try to you should knit on it that. yourself yeah <laughs> yeah the scarf is like perfect first project so you should like really give it the go i i might do that <laughs> I got, she can help me on it so right get, like you have an instructor leave an instructor like you should yeah. and i like find on YouTube. <laughs> yeah. right and i find like i learned how to need this youtube tutorials so uh, you know i feel like if i can do it you can do it as well like you can right. there is plenty of like really detailed and really close-up tutorials on all the basics so. right yeah give it a go you have the yarn I'll, with, I'll have her show me because until she gets mad then i'll switch over to youtube <laughs> if, I, if i frustrate her she's usually not easily frustrated but you never know <laughs> right well thank you so very much for being my guest today and i'm gonna put all the links for your store and your website under the video and, and we'll do a discount code or something for a week or two for your viewers to, if they wanted to come check out my yarn they can get a, a coupon code too so that's so wonderful thank you so much for doing that all right well thanks for having me <laughs> thank you